This is the last vid, uh, demo video for this lecture, and just like the others, I'm going to go ahead and undo um, all of the changes that I made, or better yet, I'm just going to close out and not save the changes. And then if I go back to Photoshop, I should be able to open Recent and open up that image and it's back to normal. Um, one of the benefits of saving it as a Photoshop file is if I had accidentally saved it, I could always go back to that original JPEG and just start over again. So the last video, we're going to talk about cropping. And I know that this is probably the fourth or fifth time that you've heard this from me if you watched all of the lecture videos for Module 1 and all the videos up until this point for Module, I'm sorry, if you watched all the lecture videos for Module 2 and all the videos up to this point in Module 3. But I know that there will be some people who will get to the project and say, how do I crop an image because that's a requirement? And then they'll kind of scan through and they'll say, that's the video that teaches me how to crop the image. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you miss something and you just are looking for it to go back to. For those of you who've already done this three or four or five times with me, if you're comfortable, obviously you don't have to watch the whole video. But I'm going to go through it the same exact way again for, I guess, the fifth time or so. So when you're cropping an image, it is important to first check and see what size the image could be. If we go to the image and image size option, it will launch the image size dialog box. And within this panel, you can decide how big could my picture be at my intended output resolution. Before you do any cropping or any editing, you should know that, right? You should know, do I have the pixels I need for my project? And if I don't, you have to find a solution. You have to make new pixels, you have to get a new image, etc. When you're cropping an image, you need to know how big it could be, but in order to check that, you need to make sure you're not resampling the image. Because to resample the image means to change the number of pixels in the image. And as good etiquette or practice when manipulating images, you don't want to destroy the number of pixels in the image or change it in any way, unless you have to for some reason. And so if I don't resample, I can adjust the width, the height, and the resolution to decide what my options are for this picture. Now this is kind of a bad example because it has lots of pixels in it. At 300 resolution, I could print this as 9 inches by 12 inches, which is fantastic. Um, if my goal was to use this as a 3 inch by 5 inch picture, or a 5 inch by 7 inch picture, or even a 6 inch by 9 inch picture, as long as that value is less than the value of 9 inches by 12 inches at 300, then I'm good to go. And so what you need to do is you need to set the resolution. So let's, since it's already set to 300, let's choose um, 240 resolution. So we will print images in Photoshop. If you're an on-campus class, you'll print in class. If you're an online class, you're welcome to come to campus and print for free in our labs. And when you do that, we're going to use a photo quality inkjet printer. And the minimum resolution needed for that is 240 PPI. And so there's some leeway when you're looking at images if you don't have enough pixels to print something at 300 resolution and have the size that you want, you could go down to 240 and the image should still be okay. When you change the image to 240, what you're basically saying is how big could it be at my intended resolution? And if you determine that your intended resolution is 240, the answer to that is I could print this as 11.4 by 5.2. And again, as long as that's bigger than what you want to crop it to, then you're good to go. And so let's pretend we're going to print this. I'm going to print this um, on our uh, Canon Pixama Pro 1 printers here at the school, and it has to be set to 240. And so how big could it be? It could be 11.4 by 15.2. Once you have set that, leave your resolution as what you need it to be and select OK. That hasn't cropped the image, and you should not crop your image in your image size dialog dialog box, but it gives you an idea of how big you could crop it to. And so now I'm going to grab the crop tool, which is like the fifth or sixth one down on your tools panel, depending on like how you have your tools panel set up. And when you're ready to crop, now you're going to use the crop tool and across the top of the screen, you're going to adjust the settings. The first drop down after it, so this is the crop tool here and just shows you kind of what you've been doing um, or some presets, depending on what you've chosen. But this first actual setting for the crop tool is ratio and it's probably what it's going to default to and you have two boxes and you can put that I want to I want to crop this to five inches by seven inches or you can even say I wanted to crop it by to five by seven which is an aspect ratio which may not end up being five by seven inches at all. I would like you to get into the practice of always choosing a width, a height, and a resolution. And so I'm going to change a setting to width height resolution and depending on your version of Photoshop 
you may have to look harder for this. It may be at the bottom of the list. I can't remember, but in like CS6, it's like, it's at the bottom and it says something weird and it opens a dialog box. But whatever version of Photoshop you're in, you need to find the option that allows you to choose the width, the height, and the resolution. If you're in a version older than like 5, uh, CS6 or 5.5, I believe the default on your, on your um, options bar at the top of the screen, I believe it defaults to the width, the height, and the resolution. Once you're able to choose a width, a height, and a resolution, you need to do so, right? And so if you're cropping web images, your width and height are going to be in pixels. And if you're cropping an image for web, you can crop it to inches. Or if for a project I tell you to crop it to um, 3 inches by 5 inches at 72, then you would put in 3 inches by 5 inches at 72. But you never want to leave these blank because if you don't tell InDesign, not InDesign, Photoshop, I teach InDesign too. I'm sure you probably know that from my rambles. Um, if you don't enter a width, a height, or resolution, Photoshop will just fill in the gap and it will make it up. It'll say, well, you have enough pixels for this image to be 8,000 pixels per square inch, and it will tell you the image is going to be that size. And so you kind of want to be the boss here and you want to say, no, I want it to be exactly 6 inches by 9 inches at 300 resolution. Or I want it to be 1,024 pixels by 768 pixels at 72 resolution. Once you set that, um, your display will show you the aspect ratio that you're cropping to. You can change this guide here and you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, you generally don't want to make it incredibly small because the image only has a certain number of pixels, right? And so if I made the box this small, there may not be enough pixels in that area to be 6 inches by 9 inches at 300. And uh, while I'm talking about it, we're actually not cropping to 300, we're cropping to 240. And so now if I slide this, you can see the slider, and it says the size of the image. And so we went into the image size dialog box and we reset this image to be 240 resolution. And so now I'm kind of comparing apples to apples, right? So my image is already set to the resolution I want and I'm cropping to the image that I want. And as I drag this slider, can you see how it's telling me how big the image is? Right now, the slider says that it's 6.608 by 9.913. That's bigger than the image that I want. And so if I wanted to, I can crop to the size without any quality loss. So I could take that part of the image and I could say that's the part I want to keep and it has enough pixels in it. But watch what happens if I make it smaller. So I'm basically taking a smaller area of the image and I'm stretching it further to fill up my 6 inch by 9 inch document. Smaller I go, it's telling me that right now my selection on an image that's set to 240 resolution is only 5.013 inches by 7.512 inches. That is an indication to me that I'm trying to take a smaller image, it's 5 by 7, and I'm trying to copy it or crop it to be 6 by 9. When you're comparing apples to apples, the document is set to 240 resolution and the crop is set to 240, you want to make sure that little guide does not go below the size you're trying to crop it to. And so if I wanted to crop this much of the image, right, it's telling me that the selection I have right now on the original image is 8.467 by 12.704 inches. That's bigger than I need, and so I could leave my crop that size, can move the image around inside, and now when I crop it, it's going to downsample it to 6 by 9, but at least it's not going to upsample it. It's not going to stretch it to fit, the, uh, to fit the needs of the size of the image. The last thing that I want to talk about in regard to cropping is the idea of cropping overlays. And so halfway across or more towards the right-hand side of your options bar here, if you push and hold, there's an option to change the overlay. And so you can choose rule of thirds, grid, diagonal, triangle, golden ratio, golden spiral. We don't talk too much about this in, in our class. It's more so covered in um, R1120 design when you have your foundations of the elements and principles of design. But these overlays help you um, create more aesthetically pleasing crops, right? And so we'll talk about rule of thirds because I think that's the easiest of the options. And so there's a theory that if you put your point of interest um, a third of the way into the page or two-thirds of the way into the page, either vertically or horizontally, it creates a more aesthetically pleasing design. And so if you try to put your subject area on one of the intersections, one, two, I'm going to click it because I think in the video it, it pops, right here, right here, right here, right here. 
it should help you create more aesthetically pleasing designs. And so right now, I'm kind of in a rule of third here, like the guy is coming up the left-hand side of the rule of thirds and it kind of lands here. But if I wanted to do a better job on that, I could move him into a more aesthetically pleasing composition. Now, it doesn't work for all images, and that's why we have different options. So the golden spiral might be a better option for this picture. And so I could move it, and so the golden spiral is used to create flow in the design. You don't have to use that for our class. In one of the projects, it's going to say crop using those overlays. I just want you to attempt to switch between them. Your grade is not going to be based on how aesthetically pleasing you've cropped your first image. So when you're ready, you can hit the little check mark at the top of your screen. It will accept the changes for your crop. And then the last thing that you should always do is you should double check that it worked. And so to double check, if you go back to image and image size, because it just gives us facts, it just tells us this is what you have, you can see that my image is now 6 inches by 9 inches at 240. If it doesn't say that, if it says 6 inches by 9 inches at 380 resolution, or it says 6 inches by 11.25 inches at 240 resolution, something went wrong in the process, and I can almost guarantee it's because you did not choose a width, height, and resolution. And so you should hit cancel and you should immediately undo, or better yet, you should just close out, don't save your changes and start over so that you're, you're cropping the original image. If you were to, let's, let's redo the crop. If you were to say, oh man, I didn't mean to do that. I want to crop it to six by nine at 300. You could go back and you could reselect your crop and you could change the resolution to 300 and you can crop it. Whoops, there we go, we've recropped it. If I go back to image and image size, it now tells me your image is 6 by 9 and that's 300 resolution. But I didn't have those pixels in the other image. It just made up 60 pixels per inch in the entire image. And that's the same as doing the upsampling that we talked about. Photoshop just made up pixels and we can't be guaranteed that those are good pixels. And so when in doubt, close out of your document, don't save the changes, and then start over again because you know that you're working from good files, from the original pictures that an pixels that the image was captured in. Okay, that wraps up the demo for the lecture on pixel basics. Um, if you would like to submit these for extra credit, you can screen cap yourself and you can show that you're cropping the images, you can ask questions, you could even write a little paragraph about what you've learned for these topics if you're trying to show that you're learning the content and thus you want to apply extra credit towards your assignments. Uh, make sure you watch all the videos because the extra credit is explained and um, there's a very specific way that you need to submit that and so if you're not watching on the videos you may not have um, you may not have seen the video that explains that process okay that wraps up pixel basics <laughs>